Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Dev Diary, where today's project was inspired by mere impatience. Now, like seriously, no joke, the file name for today's project is Turbo Stardew. So before we get into Turbo Stardew, remember to leave a like if you enjoy the video and subscribe if you're new to the channel. Also remember to turn on notifications so you don't miss future videos. So Stardew Valley, haven't really played the game since launch, so when a recent update dropped that added a bunch of new stuff, it seemed like a good place to jump back in. But seeing the new stuff was going to take some time, and my stupid brain couldn't simply enjoy the laid back nature of doing chill farming. So eventually, an idea was spawned from this impatience, which brings us to today's project. Now before we begin, you may be thinking this looks awfully familiar, even down to the farming aspect. Truth is, the initial project was an isometric farm like uh, in visuals only, but after years upon years of trial and error, I have finally built my own system for isometric games in Game Maker, and this was the maiden voyage which just so happens to be another farm like. So with that out of the way, let's talk about the game. First, everything functions on a typical grid system. The only difference between this and a typical grid game is the math. This meant that a lot of custom code had to be built to do simple things like finding tiles, including this unused function meant to find the nearest cell to a given position, which would often produce wrong results and thus needs more work. In fact, this entire project was also very much a stress test and live learning experience as to what else is needed to make it better and reusable in the future. So our player is quite typical in behavior for a top-down experience, even in isometric form, and acts as the totem for this farming experience. Holding spacebar will till the land below their feet, which is kept track of consistently in relation to the isometric grid. In doing so will trigger those drones following the player around. But before we get to the drones, let's talk about one of the props that can also be found on the field, the computer. The computer will consistently generate random seeds every second. These seeds are stored in the computer until the player is near enough to collect them. And if the player has at least one dollar, they can exchange money for seeds. These seeds are added to the player's bag and removed from the computer. Speaking of computers, right now on your computer, or phone, you can help me keep making these videos by supporting me on Patreon. Doing so can get you some special perks like exclusive content and downloads, and even early access to the weekly Dev Diary videos before they're released on YouTube. So the first drone, the Cedar, will take a random seed from the bag and automatically plant it in a random plot created by the player. And remember how we couldn't use that function to find random tiles? Well, the workaround to this was to create a separate list of plots created by the player. Then have the drone use that list to find a random tile. Now when slash if a plot is found, the cedar switches that plot to in use and spawns a plant object in that space. That new plant object runs a timer based on the type of plant that'll eventually spawn. How fast that timer runs is based on a plant hydration level. Which brings in our second drone, the water. -er. This drone will choose a random plant on the field and, well, rehydrate it. Now, when a plant reaches the end of that timer, the enemy of that type is spawned, the plant is destroyed, and the plot resets to repeat the process. There are four types of enemies, all with their own behaviors. The first is an onion, kind of, and if it physically touches a plant, will slightly reduce its hydration level. The second enemy is a pepper, which will occasionally drop a little flame. This flame will hurt any plants it touches, which can potentially lead to it burning away completely. The third enemy is an uh, eggplant, or uh, purple squash, the soggy bloated onion. I don't know. Anyway, its attack is an AoE that just straight up reverses the timer on any plants caught in its radius. And our final enemy is some evil corn who will occasionally fire the smoky corn balls at random plants, attempting to destroy them. And all enemies can be dispatched with our third and final drone, uh, the laser. <laughs> Now this drone will continuously attack any nearby enemies, though its laser range is incredibly short, forcing the player to constantly weave in and out of mobs to best utilize its abilities. When an enemy is defeated, it will leave behind, uh, we'll just call it guts. These guts are automatically collected by the player and sorted in their guts bag. And this brings us to our second prop, the box. The box works similarly to the computer. When the player gets near enough and they have guts to sell, they are automatically traded for money at three per gut. And really that's the loop. Player buys seeds, grows plants, destroys plants for their guts, sells guts for money, and repeat. 
This is less of a game in more of a taking Stardew Valley's loop and putting it on automation, then like turning that automation to like 10. <laughs> Like, I kind of wish that Stardew Valley had robots, you know, to automate the farming process, you know, so I can go fish and chat up the folk instead I'm over here chopping trees and planting seeds or trying to stiffly protect myself in the mines. Uh, ignoring everyone, being an absolute anti-social gremlin because all I wanted to see was some new content. <clears throat> Anyway, tangent aside, again, this was less of an attempt at an actual game and more just messing with mechanics and ideas. And thankfully, majority of the isometric stuff seems to be working properly, though a lot of time was spent translating things like finding tiles to work in an isometric environment. So the quote unquote gameplay for this project was really dumbed down. Originally, the plan was to have a purchase screen which would allow for more drones or upgrading of drones, but there just wasn't enough time. The good news is that a lot was learned this time around, so perhaps our next isometric project won't be as rocky. Fingers crossed. So what do you think? Do you get antsy when it comes to games like Stardew Valley or is that chill journey enough? Also now that we've got an actual isometric system going, what else should we make with it? Be sure to leave your thoughts and ideas in the comments. And with that said, brings us to the end of today's dev diary, so thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.